people, everyone watching, don't you understand that? If, if, well, say it's a bomb, then say, say whatever you want. Hey, say whatever you Get me a doctor now! I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face. The blackest eyes. The devil's eyes. As a matter of fact, it was. Halloween 3! Oh, fucking shit. God damn it. <laughs> okay, uh, Halloween 3. Halloween 3, Halloween 3. Season of the Witch, 4K UHD from Scream Factory. Uh, nothing to really say. Looks beautiful, fantastic transfer, 2021 4K scan. Um, yeah, has all the stuff you'd expect, basically. There's probably something here that's missing, but there's nothing new. That's the main takeaway. You get all these, you get two audio commentaries, you get standalone, the making of Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. Uh, you know, we got uh, Horrors Hollowed Grounds, revisiting the shooting locations, interview with Tom Berman, the special effects makeup guy. It, it, it's, it's the old shit. There are radio spots, though. I will say something about all these releases. They got radio spots, and mm, mm, that gets me, mm, that gets me all mm, in the bits. So good there. I just, you know, it's it's another Scream Factory release. It looks great. They put their A-team on it as far as the actual physical film goes, but as far as special features go, it's just more of the same. So if you're only looking to upgrade for more special features, you're out of luck. If you're looking to upgrade for just picture quality, awesome. It looks beautiful. Oh, also you can, you know, as, as with everything else, you can switch the art on the insert to the old poster art instead of this art so if that's something that's really important to you for some reason also available anyway let's talk about this movie brought to you by come on come on come on what's the matter don't you have any halloween spirit so let's start this off by stating the obvious halloween 3 is fucking stupid at the end we don't decide these things, you know. At a very base level, Halloween 3 is about consumer conformity. The idea that these three basic ass masks would be the hit of the- Oh, by the way, spoilers. Spoilers, by the way. And I'm not going into the plot. The plot, you, it's Halloween 3. Anyway, the idea that these three basic ass masks would be the hit of the season is maybe a bit of a hard pill to swallow, but it does tie in nicely with the idea of the consumer as a sheep blindly following and buying what they're told. It's a pretty cynical idea, but it's also something a lot of viewers won't even pick up on in between shots of that glorious stash. I'm kidding, they're, they're too busy trying to wrap their brains around where the fuck Michael Myers ran off to. Still, to this day, you get people referring to Halloween 3 as the shitty one that doesn't have old Mikey boy, despite it having quite the critical resurgence over the years and, you know, us having suffered through Michael Myers' 90s and early aughts years. <laughs> But anyway, Halloween 3. The whole film works thanks to little elements that together beat out anything that might be dubbed bad, like the questionable logic or shitty fire compositing. Hell, just look at the ending. As is pointed out in the commentary with director Tommy Lee Wallace, it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. When did Cochran turn Ellie into a robot? Why doesn't Chalice tell the kids to take off their masks in the gas station? Actually, side note, why are kids trick-or-treating at a gas station? Who exactly is he talking to who just has the power to trust a random doctor calling in to cut off paid advertisements on multiple channels? Everything does kind of just fall into Chalice's lap until it doesn't, but he's proactive enough that it's okay. It may also be that the excessively porny relationship between these two is so incredibly distracting. I guess her dad just died, so she needs a new daddy? Hey, I don't know. It's weird. But also, there's something about Tom Atkins that makes it feel so... 
Right. Yeah, Tom, Tom, Tom Atkins, he just straight fucks. There's something goofy yet mature about Halloween 3, as I already went into. It, it's a super dumb movie with a real goober of a plot, but it's constantly anchored by one man. A family man. A doctor man. A drinking man. A mustachioed man. The man. Tom fucking Atkins. And I don't know what the hell is going on. It was Deborah Hill's idea to cast a less conventional lead, and when you consider the young, sexy casts of the previous two Halloweens, this is yet another in a long line of differences to help Season of the Witch stand out. Tom Atkins, while certainly a manly dude, isn't exactly the next pop idol. He's middle-aged, he doesn't have any defined muscle, but he's a big dude, and he's certainly not the first guy you'd think of in the context of shacking up with Stacey Nelkin. But there he is, being a straight-up pimp daddy with a drinking problem that wouldn't pass muster in the modern age. What kind of doctor is he? One who doesn't play fools. That's what kind. Yes sir, Halloween 3, a unique mix of about a dozen elements that shouldn't work on paper, but blend together like an orgasm smoothie. What you really need to see is a demonstration, and there's one coming right up. Something I failed to really talk about the last two videos is the cinematography of Dean Cundey, who of course worked on the first three Halloween films, as well as The Fog, The Thing, and a number of post-Carpenter blockbusters like Jurassic Park, the Back to the Future trilogy, and of course, the Al Pacino starring classic, Jack and Jill. What's my name? Dunkachino! It's a whole new game! Dunkachino! You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend! Say hello to my chocolate blend! He also DP'd the Rudy Ray Moore film The Human Tornado, which was quite the pleasant surprise for me. Anyway, Dean Cundey is an absolute master of cinematic composition, and for my money, while his lighting is particularly moody in Halloween 2 and he perfectly captures the suburban terror of the 78 film, his best work in the franchise comes in Halloween 3. Now, part of this is the sheer number of locations and setups that he's tasked with. Rather than being trapped in the aforementioned suburbs or a hospital, Season of the Witch allows Cundey to spread his wings and fly. As any Carpenter fanboy already knows, the relationship between he and Dean Cundey was easily the most artistically bountiful of Carpenter's career. A major element of this is Carpenter's love of deep focus, which Cundey picked up on and perfectly realized with gorgeous 239-1 anamorphic widescreen compositions that utilized multiple layers of the frame in a mix of populist commercial aesthetic and shadowy, sometimes expressionistic techniques that would become integral to both men's careers. In Halloween 3, just about every shot is given a deep focus with multiple layers, with something in the foreground, midground, and background to enliven the image. Even this scene in the motel room, which starts off fairly stock with the two characters set in a stagey way against the window backdrop, with backlight adding some quality silhouette, because we're not playing with fucking children's games here, okay? And pans over to create an absolute clinic of a shot, with Ellie in the foreground, lit by the window, Chalice turning on a new backlight to give himself a new silhouette, and the open bathroom door adding a shot of aqua blue to spice things up a bit, and add some daylight to give Chalice some edge light. Just, mm. Oh, just, just, it, it's beautiful. Now, that's not the only example, of course, but it was the one where I consciously thought, well, this shot's a bit drab compared to the rest before it panned over, and I was all like, oh, Cundy, you bitch, you got, oh, you got me, you fucking got me, you fucking beautiful bastard. Point is, I really like the cinematography in this film. If you'd like me to dig deeper, uh, get a bit more technical, perhaps, drop a comment asking for it, okay, baby? That's a dumb question, Miss Grimpage. So the problem with these videos that I maybe realized a bit too late is that with this much legacy baggage, there's actually too much to talk about. And in the case of Halloween 3, I just have too many positives. For the sake of brevity, here's a bunch of things I love about Season of the Witch. I love that there's this nice chill pace that never feels plodding, but lets the story play out without rushing things. Well, for the most part, the opening scenes are a total workhorse in getting us to the good stuff while setting up necessary backstory like Chalice's kids and bitchy wife, who is probably in the right. Uh, speaking of which, I love Chalice's constant drinking and flirting. He's, he's my kind of scumbag. I love that when Cochran is showing off his little chunk of Stonehenge, he gets to the point where he should be explaining how he went about it. Instead, we get this total narrative shrug. <laughs> wouldn't believe how we did it. I love the capital B brilliant choice in casting Dick Warlock, who played Michael Myers in Halloween 2 as the lead heavy. He, of course, also did the stunt coordinating as well. Uh, I love that Nigel Neal, he of Stone Tape and Quatermass fame, wrote the initial script. It's got a sort of classy undertone that plays well with the seedier aspects. Looking at you, Marge Gutman's gaping wound. <laughs> 
I love that Halloween playing on the TV works shockingly well, especially as the music lines up with Cochran's final words to Chalice. Happy Halloween. I love the iconic simplicity of the masks, only one of which was made specifically for this film. I love how Cochran just claps when Chalice beats him as if complimenting his mastery of the joke. But the thing I love most is the finale. One of the best coups of the original Halloween is the open, fairly dark ending that suggests evil is and always will be out there, lurking in the shadows, striking when you least suspect in the dead of night. The idea that this is something you can't kill, a boogeyman without humanity or any semblance of mortal constraints. It's downright perfect, and a good reason to just not make sequels. It stands alone, despite being open-ended. With Halloween 3, a similar construct is formed, albeit with an even more squared-off finale. Our hero, having beaten the evil Irish CEO and his robot army, what a fucking sentence that is, pleads desperately with whoever the fuck is on the line to get the commercial off the air and save all those poor TV-addled brains who we naturally accept aren't out and about but just sitting in front of the boob tube ready for that catchy theme song to literally scramble their brains. He pleads to shut it off, one channel goes down, another pops up, he pleads, and the commercial goes down, only for another channel to also be playing, and there's just no time left. He screams again, the screen cuts to credits, and we're left with the knowledge that the world, or at least North America, has effectively ended. No more Halloween in this world. All is lost. Millions of children are dead. Fuck you. Have a nice night. What an absolute banger of an ending. This is where I would normally continue on for another 10 minutes, droning about the hate the film gets or how the theme is stuck in my head for all eternity, but with Halloween 3, if you love it, you know it already. Uh, for me, it's, it's the best sequel of the Halloween series, but more importantly, it's just a fucking great little horror movie. Now go watch... A, a movie. Fuck that transition suck. Stop it! 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 Stop it!